This is Bella. Ba, ba. Bella, this is Mr. McCandles. Hello, Bella. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to my channel and time for the first Luke's Reviews of 2024 and kicking things off is a film that I have been eagerly anticipating ever since it started going around on the awards circuit hearing the new fever dream that Yorgos Lanthimos has concocted it's poor things. Emma Stone stars as Bella Baxter a young woman who after suffering a terrible accident was discovered by Willem Dafoe's experimental scientist and saved from death. There's just one catch. Bella now possesses the mind of a child, and so is learning the world anew, and as she'll soon discover, there are some that would rather do her harm than care for her. Out of Lanthimos's filmography thus far, I would say that it is safe to say I have been appreciative of his work and his distinct voice from behind the camera on his films like The Lobster, the Killing of a Sacred Deer, and The Favourite, but out of the films that I have seen of his, there hasn't been one that truly leapt from the screen and properly amazed me until Poor Things. Seriously, this was a terrific motion picture. Entirely original storytelling and filmmaking, right from the first frame to the very last. It's a nearly two and a half hour odyssey of a young woman exploring herself, her worth, her place in the world. But it's also two and a half hours of Lanthimos totally swinging for the fences and delivering a completely uncompromised vision. Yes, it may be the epitome of bizarre and quirky filmmaking. Poor things more than earns that 18 age rating. It is Lanthimos's most adult film to date. But that eccentricity is what drives the film's personality forward. I have always found that the world in which all of Lanthimos's films inhabit to be almost as if they exist in a mildly alternate dimension to our own. With Poor Things, that same presentation remains. There are frequent glimmers of the world that we recognise, but for the most part, whether it be Lisbon, Paris, or London, these sets and locations appear to exist within a lucid dream world, and I find that approach utterly fascinating. The production design is exquisite. Each room, set, exterior, interior, no matter where they are, it feels oddly familiar and yet completely peculiar. Every element is adapted slightly to just seem not quite normal, such as dining room chairs that tower above a person, or a sailboat that is oddly reminiscent of something that you would expect to see in a Jules Verne work. The same goes for costume design and score too. You've got gowns, suits, all look stunning, but never quite ordinary. Jerskin Fendrix's score, I mean, the best way to describe it is like it's playing on a teeny tiny classical music box that is ever so slightly out of tune. Everything about this film, no matter how minute the detail, it adds to the character. But none more so than Emma Stone. My word, she is transcendent as Bella Baxter. Stone gives comfortably my favourite performance of the award season and the best of her entire career. Every inch of her transforms into this young Pinocchio-esque woman discovering the joys and horrors of life. From plodding around like an infant to seamlessly altering her vocabulary to talk as fragmented and impulsive as a child, to her eventual development as the film progresses, it's nothing short of masterful. And as much as I would love to see Lily Gladstone pick up the Oscar for Killers of a Flower Moon, Stone here is just operating on such a different level. But the fantastic performances don't stop there. Mark Ruffalo, he too, gives a career best. The character of Duncan Wedderburn is nothing more than a pathetic weasel that manages to coax Bella along for his own personal needs. Ruffalo is hilarious, spouting ridiculous declarations, and in a couple of instances, 
fully allows to make a complete and utter buffoon of himself. Willem Dafoe is as magnificent as always, cementing himself as perhaps the greatest character actor in Hollywood today, and there are also great smaller appearances from the likes of Rami Youssef, Christopher Abbott, and Catherine Hunter. The tale of Poor Things does owe some of its beats to classic stories like Pinocchio and Frankenstein, but does more than it needs to to set itself apart from those stories by having very frank discussions about exploitation, abuse, and sexuality. You may find yourself quite perturbed by how graphic this film tends to get, but it's all in service of telling Bella's epic story. Bella Baxter is someone who I think in years to come we will look back on and view her as an icon of cinema. If I were to have any flaws of the film, I'd say that it's probably about 10 to 15 minutes too long, and that there is a, a sequence that takes place towards the end of the second act that I think just outstays its welcome. I didn't find it, like, inherently bad, but the point was made, and I feel like we were just going around in circles ever so slightly. But otherwise, Poor Things was nothing short of dazzling. I couldn't take my eyes off the screen, whether it be Lanthimos's impeccable direction or Emma Stone's astonishing performance. The rest of the ensemble are tremendous. It's absolutely marvellous to look at, with not a poorly framed shot in sight. I mean, yeah, it's odd, it's outlandish, but it's also original, and really damn outstanding. I'm going to give Poor Things an 8 out of 10. Anyway, guys, those were my thoughts on Poor Things. Let me know, have you had the chance to see the film yet? What did you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And my question to you, I would like to know, well, seeing as I said that Emma Stone is my front runner to win Best Actress at the Oscars, who's yours? Who do you think will be up there collecting the award in March? Let me know. But that is all the time we have for today. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Hello, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button. And if you aren't already, click that subscribe button too.